I would like to start presentation. Yes, uh, so good afternoon, colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm grateful to for the opportunity to speak on this webinar, and I thank the scientific committee for the opportunity. Uh, my lecture is from the field of urogynecology, and it addresses uh, the topic of pelvic organ prolapse. You can see the title right on the screen. Uh, I have no disclosures. But before we even start, uh, let me clarify that I'm not saying that this is the only and the best method to correct pelvic organ prolapse. I'm just saying it is one of the possible alternatives. I personally believe in this procedure, and I think it is a good one to have in your pocket when you're consulting your patients. Let me start with some general information about the pelvic organ prolapse. It is a quite common condition with prevalence up to 40% in women older than 45 years old. There is a lifetime risk of pelvic organ prolapse surgery between 11 to 20%. And when we do the surgery, there is a 30% chance of recurrence. Of course, it matters on the type of the procedure, the POPQ status and other variables. Nevertheless, the number is still pretty high, even if, if we try. There are some well-known risk factors for the pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, it's increasing age, vaginal delivery, especially the one uh, connected with the levator ni evulsion, and the obesity. When you do the surgery for pelvic organ prolapse, you should always think of the apical compartment fixation. For example, when you see a cystocele, you shouldn't just do a simple uh, anterior corporaphy because almost every cystocele has an apical component. So you should always choose a uh, surgical procedure to correct that as well. And finally, hysterectomy is not a solution for pelvic organ prolapse. Uh, the uterus plays a passive role okay. and uh, it is... Yes. Sorry for the inconvenience. We couldn't even see your next slide up there. Um, let me. Can you yes. see it now? Yes. Can okay. So. Uh, slide now. Yeah. You're requested to move on to the next slide because it's staying in the front slide on the first page of this presentation. Uh, I'm not sure that I uh, get what you mean, but hopefully it will be okay now. We requested to change the slides back there as only we could see your first slide of the presentation. Can you see the keeping the uterus slide? No, we could only see your friend page. Our conference detail, which is the second international webinar in technology and obstetrics. We could view only that slide. Yes, we could see now that slide. Okay, so uh, so I I'm not going to use the full screen mode. I will use this one if you don't mind. Yes, so, sure. There was there was the there was the general information about the pelvic organ prolapse. You can see it here on this last slide. And finally, the hysterectomy is not a solution for pelvic organ pro prolapse reconstruction because the uterus plays a passive role in it. And so uh, it is not required uh, uh, for, the, for the successful uh, pelvic organ prolapse reconstruction surgery. Continuing from the last slide, uh, let's address the topic of the uterus preservation because this is the actual the key point in all hysteropexies. Uh, as always in life, there are some pros and cons to this method, and I would like to go through them. The, let's start with the pros. Uh, the first one, and I think the main one, is that the uterus gives us uh, the good fixation point. The cervix uh, is actually the part of the uterus where we... Uh, put our sutures in is a thick and robust tissue and our stitches don't cut through this tissue and so it uh, makes an excellent anchoring point. 
the other one is that the anatomy stays intact. Uh, the other supportive structures like uterosacral ligaments, cardinal ligaments, and others are in place, and there is no extra dissection and vascular damage. Uh, which can further uh, weaken the pelvic floor. Uh, keeping the uterus also comes with shorter operation time, decreased blood loss, and uh, faster recovery. It follows a trend of minimally invasive surgery. And in the population of younger women, there is a still chance for their pregnancy uh, with the uterus still in place. There are other reasons we can, a uh, more subjective one, we can hear from our patients sometimes. Uh, they wish to keep their uterus because it protects the, their female identity. Uh, it, uh, they think that uh, uterus or cervix in place comes with better sexual functions. Nevertheless, it was uh, never proven in studies. And, of, and they are also afraid that uh, hysterectomy will lead to some urinary problems or even weight gain. Mm -hmm. But every coin has two sides. Patients should always be counseled that there is still a chance for uterine pathologies to occur, like uh, abnormal bleeding or various benign lesions such as fibroids, adenomyosis, hyperplasia, and so on. And of course, there is still a risk uh, of cancer. The lifetime risk of cervical, endometrial, and ovarian cancer varies between one and 3%. So patients need to be checked for any risk factors for family history of not only gynecological cancer, but also breast cancer and other types. And they should be checked and assessed for any precursor lesions that may already be in place, like cervical dysplasia, endometrial hyperplasia, and so on. But I would like to mention that uh, only the some sort of fear of developing uh, gynecological cancer in the future shouldn't be a sole reason for hysterectomy without any objective risk factors. Um, after all of that is covered, patients uh, uh, should be uh, Council that the regular follow-ups with their OBGYN are still important. And patients who are non-compliant in this matter aren't a good candidate for hysteropexy. Now, uh, let me walk you through the procedure itself. Uh, well, the fixation point is the sacrospinous ligament, which is uh, right here. In, it goes from the ischial spine to the sacrum and the coccyx. There are pudendal vessels and nerves that go uh, behind the ischial spine. So we need to place our sutures more medially towards the sacrum to avoid injuries to set structures. Well, first of all, we make an incision, the colpotomy. As you may know, in the classic uh, sacrospinous colposuspension in patients after hysterectomy, the procedure starts with the posterior colpotomy and the dissection pararectally. Well, here we can perform the hysteropexy uh, uh, through both colpotomy, through the anterior one and the posterior one, which is not only useful, but also uh, convenient. For example, when we have a patient with an apical defect and the concomitant cystocele, we can perform the surgery through the anterior colpotomy and vice versa. We try to avoid any additional scarring of the vaginal wall, which can lead to more pain, dyspareunia, or other complications. Uh, then we continue with sharp and blunt dissection as we prepare tunnels towards the ischial spine and the sacrospinous ligament. Uh, then we clean the ligament, let's say, by a sweeping motion from lateral pelvic wall more medially to avoid any injuries to the rectum. Um, after all that, it's time to place our anchoring sutures. Uh, we like to use the suture capturing devices such as CAPIO, you can see here, or endostitch or other uh, devices that are able on the market. Uh, we uh, 
it's another way how to reduce the amount of dissection. We guide this instrument only by hand without any visual control. So the dissection is uh, quite minimal. Uh, but also keep in mind the risk of injuring the pudendo vessels and nerve. So you need to place your index finger between the ischial spine and the device. So you can get uh, like a 15 millimeters or two centimeters safety gap uh, to avoid uh, the injury of pudendo uh, arteries. Uh, then you can, uh, I like to put two non-absorbable sutures on both sides, and I will tell you why quite soon. Then you can perform your concomitant procedures in other compartments, such as uh, repairing the sister seal or the rectal seal or whatever you need. And uh, then it's time to pass your sutures through the lateral part of the cervix. And But before we elevate the uterus, I like to start with uh, closing the colpotomy first from the cervix upwards. And after a few steps, I then tie uh, the anchoring stitches so the uterus gets elevated up into the pelvis. I like to stay tension-free and I like to uh, remain, uh, let's say, a uh, suture bridge that you can maybe know from a uh, birch corpus suspension. In the other words, I don't tie the sutures very hard so that uterus don't touch the ligament. Uh, I leave the suture bridge and uh, the reason for that is uh, less tension on the stitches equals uh, less postoperative pain, less chance of dyspareunia or any other complications because the uterus can still move a little bit on those loose sutures. And right after that, uh, I can uh, close uh, the colpotomy to, to the end. Then there is the Foley catheter. Uh, you can pack the vagina if you want and always check the rectum for any, any damage. Uh, the possible uh, complications are well known. Uh, the main one and the main specific one is the buttock pain. It is created uh, by the tension of the anchoring sutures on the sacrospinal uh, ligament. Uh, luckily, it usually resolves on itself after a few days or weeks uh, after surgery. The other complications uh, are concerning the anchoring sutures. The sutures can be torn or they can erode into the vaginal wall, especially if they are under, under great tension and sometimes they even need to be removed. So that's why I put two sutures on both sides because it's good uh, to have uh, some spare ones uh, in your pocket. So even if you, even if you cut one or, or two of them out, you still have the other two or three uh, that can hold the uterus in place. Now I, do, I would like to share with you a video of my sacrospinous hysteropexy with a concomitant anterior compartment repair. Uh, I won't bother you with any commentary during that, just uh, sit back and enjoy because we just run through the, through the procedure step-by-step. Step. So let's, let's see the video.
Uh, excuse me, I was given a question if there are any issues with the video. Can you see the video, please? No, we could not be able to see your video, doctor. You cannot? No, doctor. Okay, so so uh, I'm very sorry for that. It may be due to some uh, troubles with the internet connection and the video is uh, quite large. So uh, maybe I will give you uh, the link for the YouTube video uh, in the chat so you can maybe see the video on your own. And I'm really sorry that it doesn't work that way. Uh, not an issue, so, doctor. Uh, you can put this in the chat. Okay, I will put it in chat. So uh, nevertheless, let me continue uh, with the results. Uh, not our results, but the one we can find in the literature because our cohort is uh, way too uh, small right now. So uh, as you can see, there are a number of studies regarding the sacrospinous hysteropexy. Uh, they mostly compare the vaginal hysterectomy with uterosacral ligament suspension and the sacrospinous hysteropexy. Some of them uh, favor hysterectomy. Some of them say that the hysteropexy provides a better outcome. Well, in the end, uh, the hysteropexy is uh, non-inferior to other methods, and they provide actually quite similar outcomes. There are even some meta-analysis concerning native tissue vaginal repair and they show similar results with the hysterectomy and, uh, and uh, appropriate apical fixation and the hysteropexy uh, itself. There is no significant differences uh, in pelvic organ prolapse recurrence, uh, in reoperation rate, or in uh, patient uh, satisfaction. Uh, here you can see that even the FIGO group says that uh, the sacrospinous hysteropexy is a safe and effective surgical method to correct pelvic organ prolapse uh, in patients who wish to uh, preserve their uterus. And here is in the flowchart, you can see that the sacrospinous hysteropexy marked with the red circle is a preferred way to treat the pelvic organ prolapse uh, with keeping the uterus. Thank you very much for your attention. I'm sorry about the technical issues, especially the video that didn't work, but I will show you the link uh, in a minute. And here are uh, my references. And I'm looking forward for any question from the auditorium. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your presentation, Doctor. So any questions for Dr. Prakot? 